Okay, hello. Um, it's pretty late here uh, and I'm kind of tired, uh, but I wanted to make this video um, because I had this idea uh, when I woke up, was it Wednesday or Thursday, Thursday I think? Because um, I heard about this Tailwind, J uh, Tailwind CSS library and at Code Sandbox we talk a lot about um, design systems and how to implement design systems and uh, and we have like a lot of experience there and we want to contribute with um, something like because this is not a solved thing um, so I'm kind of like iterating on like um, uh, there's a guy uh, named Sid uh, at Code Sandbox and he worked for Auth0 and knows a lot about design systems does a lot of talks and he kind of like um, he doesn't have the TypeScript experience um, but he has a lot of ideas on how we can implement a design system uh, at Code Sandbox. So he's kind of like throwing me uh, suggestions and kind of like challenges. And then I like I get these ideas and then I build stuff and then we talk about it. And yeah, so this is one of those ideas. Um, now, the thing with Tailwind, Tailwind CSS, like I haven't used it myself, um, but the way I imagine that you use it is exactly how they write in the docs like you. Uh, you in you have these preset classes that you use and you use them directly in your code like this. Um, now coming from like TypeScript, the first thing for me like uh, and of course this works with React and everything else, uh, but the first thing that uh, comes to my mind is like it's not it's not typed like how do you remember all these different class names. Uh, and I would like imagine that people would constantly check the documentation to, to find the, the class names. Uh, it doesn't seem like a good developer experience. Like when you know the class names, it's like an awesome developer experience, but uh, not if you, if you don't know them. Um, and then you have, I don't know if they have it here, um, but like in VS Code, maybe I can bring it up here. Uh, in VS Code, uh, Tailwind CSS. Oops, uh, they do have uh, like an intelligence thing uh, that gives you like it knows about everything, and this is really nice. It even shows the colors. Now the problem with this though, for this intelligence to understand that you're actually managing Tailwind CSS classes, is that you write them in a class, and then there's a big big important thing that's left out of this and that is defining these classes as variables so for example if you would uh, let's just write something here so in react for example you would say uh, container equals container which is a class in, uh, in tailwind css but like the intelligence will know that this variable is actually related to tailwind css like it no way it can do that. Uh, and then you also have like, what about composability? Like you have to insert every class every single time. Like you would want to, maybe you have one type of container that contains three different classes and you want to reuse that. Maybe you have a button uh, that has a, uh, a set of classes and then you maybe you want a red button. So you want to take the uh, base button and then add like a background color of red, for example. Um, so you, you don't have that composability um, as far as I uh, um, know, and I don't understand how that could even work. Um, so um, then I thought about uh, TypeScript. Um, what if we used um, uh, an API and we get all the typing and we get the composition and everything? And then I thought about like, there's this really awesome project called class names, uh, which is basically, uh, we can look at it. Um, yes, let's see class names. And what class names do is basically gives you a class name composition. So you would just say uh, class names and then it would give it two different class names and it would basically just create the string. Now, what's really cool about this is that it also has dynamic composition. So again, here you have foobar, results in foobar, and then you have foo, and then you uh, 
have an object where the keys are the class names and then you have a boolean value if it should be included or not um, so as you see here foobar uh, false then there's nothing here so this is super super powerful like this is how we build um, uh, applications we have dynamic classes and again like i don't see how you would like do that effectively with this like you would have to use something like class names and it's such such an essential thing um yes so then i uh built this thing and i tweeted out about it um i call it tailwind css dash typescript but now i changed it to class names because after i showed this to sid at code sandbox we were talking about like what well, what are the actual benefits here and looking at the vs code extension for tailwind css like you have discoverability there like you can you get auto suggestions and everything um, but what you don't get is all the stuff i talked about now the composition the ability to put the classes into variables compose them into uh, bigger um, sets of classes and stuff so um, the way this library works and uh, we can read through the documentation and then i have a sandbox a code sandbox that we can look at Okay, so first of all, uh, uh, just going through this, blah, 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 low footprint, blah, blah, blah. And I talk about the extension and stuff. And then I go to what is special about this. So first of all, we get validation of class names. So um, like with Tailwind uh, CSS, there's no validation uh, when you type the classes. Like you get the auto suggestion, but like if that's not open you don't know if the classes are correct or not but yeah, with typescript you know uh, what's correct and what's not correct and then you get the functional approach i talked about where you're able to uh, use um, like a functional api to compose different classes together and then you can use that result to compose it into more stuff um, and you can even do the dynamic part uh, I mentioned uh, that class names provide. Um, yes, and then just the fact that you can actually define a variable <laughs> um, because we're using an API typed API. So it doesn't matter where you write these classes because when you use the API, it's typed and then so you can use put them into variables uh, wherever you want. OK, so oh, is this the new one? Oh, here we go. Um, so the way this works is that you import class names from Tailwind CSS class names, and then you basically use that API and all the arguments you insert here are the classes. And you can only insert the classes from the Tailwind CSS uh, library. Um, so as you can see here, oh, I should change this image. It should be class names. Um, you see that you actually get the suggestions on the different classes you can use, but um, you can even, like if I wrote blue here, it will still match here. So it's actually searchable. It's not just like auto suggestion. You actually, it's kind of like, it's kind of search. I don't know if that works in uh, the Tailwind uh, extension. Maybe it does, but anyways, that's nice to have. And then you have the, and just like class names, like it's literally class names you're using. I've just typed it. Um, so here you can see, even if you use the object, you have that typed. So you can only use keys, which represents class names from Tailwind. And then you have pseudo selectors. We're in a functional approach here. So you import like hover and uh, disabled and uh, visible visibility. I don't remember all of them. But this adds the, uh, the hover uh, effect, for example. And then uh, I'm showing composing classes here. So you can now create a variable called button, which has some stuff. And then you have like red button, which composes button and uh, some other class. So the really cool thing here is that even though these uh, class names res um, returns just a string, it's, a, uh, it's typed as a special Tailwind class string, which means that you can only compose in strings that actually uh, is a result of calling class names. So if I would write like foo here or something, uh, TypeScript would actually yell at me. Or if I would insert a variable that's not a Tailwind 
uh, class uh, or class composition. Uh, usage with React, we're going to look at that. And then there's also th this thing that you don't really uh, need to use everything from Tailwind. And the way you would handle that here is that uh, everything is typed by, as we can see here, by a uh, main category. So you have like a layout type, which includes everything underneath here, but you also have like a container type, a display type, a flow type. So you can kind of like compose together um, the classes that you actually use so that when you use the API, it will be typed to what you have actually exposed to the app. Yes. Um, okay, so let's look at how you actually would use this. Uh, oops. Um, so I have this, um, let's see here. Let's close this stuff down. Do, 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 do. Okay, so I have the um, file here and um, I have three different examples. So the first one is just a plain uh, app. Uh, so let's look at that. And here we can see that, that I'm importing class names and MD, which is like medium device and hover. This is, this gives some responsiveness and you can see I'm using it in line here in react. Uh, so instead of writing strings, I'm using class names and I'm using these pseudo selectors. And uh, as we can see, if I remove this, uh, everything's typed. Uh, and awesome. And if I write something wrong here, it yells at me. So that's nice. Yeah. So nothing special about that, but as you can see, it takes up a lot of it's, um, it's very low level. It's not domain specific. It doesn't describe what your class actually is. Like if you were to create a, your own class for this, you wouldn't like name it uppercase tracking wide text. So you, um, it would be nice to be more domain specific. Um, and what do I mean? Uh, what do I mean about that? Um, well, if we look, oops, uh, here we are app with component. And this shouldn't be here. I have to fix this. Okay. So if you were to use, uh, just styles, so that means that you would create like your own styles file, and then you would rather name, give new names to these. Uh, compositions. So like container is the whole thing. You have image container, the image itself, text container, label, title, description. And now when you import these styles, you can give um, a more domain specific um, class name or um, representation of the class name or the classes added to the element, I guess. Uh, and that cleans uh, things up a ton and you open up for the composability. So you might have like a description uh, thing that's used between many different components. Uh, and then you can take it uh, even a step further. So you can uh, do what you do with style components. Um, so you would create components instead of uh, pure classes. So here we have container image wrapper image, which allows us to be uh, more specific about again, more like domain specific. Um, of a title link and all that stuff. And that's uh, defined. Uh, and this is what style components does under the hood. It creates a component for you. Um, and in this case, we are just uh, returning the element and uh, we are inlining the class name because this is um, considered to be like um, styling components or UI components. Uh, but it's, uh, it's a really nice uh, way to go because you can then pass in, for example, if the label uh, should have like uh, uh, disabled, for example, I could just add disabled here. Um, oops, and that should be like a Boolean. And then uh, we get disabled in here. So I can now say, okay, if, um, we have label tracking why yeah so if uh yeah sorry um are we at oh sorry i'm messing around there so here we go <laughs> so let's see uh so let's say that we wanted like a gray yeah gray color if it is disabled 
for example. So this is how you can uh, give functionality. And now when I use the label here, um, oh, I guess I'm not in the correct one with element label. You can see here, I can say disabled. Um, maybe I should give it a bit more background color gray. Shouldn't that like maybe red? Do we see? Oh, sorry. We have to go down to the correct one. Yeah. So here you see it. Um, so this gives you a, a really nice way to compose your app, just like style components, but you're actually using Tailwind to do all the work here. And okay. Uh, I hope this, um, uh, this made sense. Um, I, again, I haven't used this personally, but, um, I've been using style components and I like the freedom of style components, but again, style components is actually quite low level because uh, it doesn't help you uh, quickly design your uh, app uh, and give you like a design system. This is a design system um, and that's really what you want. Um, yes, but I hope this made sense. Uh, it was a lot of fun uh, making it. Um, let me show you the code. It's kind of crazy because it's like <laughs> over 1000 lines of typing. <laughs> and then the library itself is just uh, this, this line. It's actually one line. It's just class names uh, typed with uh, Tailwind. Um, and then you also have the, the pseudo selectors. And then you have the create custom thing. Uh, where you have like a custom typing. Um, so um, I guess uh, there's something missing here. Um, one thing is um, now all the classes are created at runtime. Uh, it's possible to create like a, a, a webpack loader uh, or something like that to, um, or a bubble uh, plugin to make those um, um, ev those be ev evaluated at compile time. Um, and st yeah, stuff like that. And also, um, there's some, uh, a lot of configuration in Tailwind. I guess you can introduce custom classes and stuff like that. Um, that's not like, uh, type supported. Um, but I didn't want to go too far with this. Um, uh, but it's a, it's a really good start for a library, I think. Um, so please check it out and let me know what you think about it. And I'm happy to maintain this because it's it, it's like no code at all. So it's very easy for me to to keep this going. Um, and yeah, I hope you liked it. And if you didn't like it, I hope it kind of gave you some perspectives on how you can do things. Um, yeah, and I'm going to bed now. And so have a good night and I'll talk to you later.